How to make milk kefir? You will need, you will need a suitable fermentation jar, glass being the preferred choice, a strainer or a sieve, a jar cover. This can be as simple as some tissue held on by a rubber band or something more specific like our dedicated jar covers. A stirrer or a spoon. Some milk, milk kefir grains. Whole meal works best. The more fat content in the milk, the thicker the end kefir will be. Skimmed and semi-skimmed milk works, but it can lead to a very watery, thin kefir. For plant-based milks, see the recipe section of our website for more details. First, we must activate the grains. Empty your grains into your jar. Measure out 250 ml of milk. No matter how many grains you have, always use 250 ml of milk to activate them. Too much milk and the grains can struggle to get going. Always start small and only increase when you are confident the grains are fermenting well. Pour your milk into the jar. Cover it and leave it for around 48 hours. If your kefir starts to look like this, don't panic. This is just the separation process and it's completely normal. Separation indicates fermentation is happening. As the grains consume lactose, they release lactic acids. Lactic acids lower the overall pH of the milk, causing it to separate into curds and whey. Grains can suffer from shipping. We use a separation test to check the grain activity. Once we see separation, we can consider the grains activated, or simply put, they have recovered from shipping. Now the grains are ready to be sifted out from the liquid. On this occasion, we discard the liquid. It is likely to contain more soured milk than actual kefir. Although drinking it is unlikely to make you ill, it is a gamble and we would always advise against it. Once we have discarded the milk, we are ready to repeat the process again. We recommend five grams of milk kefir grains for every 250 ml of milk. Although fermentation is not an exact science, it is worth regularly checking the rates of grains to ensure the ratio is correct, as too many or too little grains can lead to issues further down the line. Once you have your first batch, you can begin to bottle your kefir. Pour the contents of the jar into a jug using a sieve or strainer. Stirring the kefir through the sieve can really help separate the grains. Don't worry, you really can't be too rough or overdo it. Once back into milk, grains simply rebind to each other. Place your grains back into the jar ready for your next batch. Remember, if you need a break from making kefir, grains can be hibernated by placing them into fresh milk and storing them in the fridge. Generally, the milk will need to be changed every three weeks to ensure overall grain health. For long term storage, we find milk kefir grains freeze really well. And that's it, you are now ready to bottle, chill and drink your homemade kefir. Milk kefir can be stored at room temperature for a further seven days if desired. However, it's best to store it in the fridge as soon as possible where it will keep for another 30 days. It is worth noting that sealed bottles of milk kefir can get very fizzy. If you prefer your kefir without a fizz, ensure the bottles are left loose, allowing the gas to escape.